Hello, <clears throat> this is video Y, and in this one, we're going to get all abstract again, talking about abstract data types, and it's embarrassing for me, I know, um, a rerun of a shirt, I almost made it through the whole alphabet without wearing the same shirt twice, but this is shirt A, sorry about that. Um, let's talk about two outrageously, if I can spell that out, R-A-G-E-O-U-S-L-Y, two outrageously important ADTs. Can't spell ADT. ADTs. Now, abstract data type, all we've got to do is talk about operations, so we're not even going to soil our hands with code or talking about C++ or any of that, at least not right now, we're going to talk about these outrageous ADTs and see if I can make, uh, convince you that they are pretty important. Number one, Roman numeral, it's, it's important, look, Roman numeral, because that's how important it is. Stack. If it's an ADT, then we start by thinking, well, let's see, uh, does this need to be um, an array, maybe a structure. You can shake your head and nod knowingly. Of course we don't start by that. We don't even end with that. If it's an ADT, all we talk about are the operations that you've got to be able to do if you're a stack, and we don't care what your implementation is. You can implement yourself any way you want as long as you do the things that we're going to be listed up here. Now, this is actually referred to in several different ways. This is, uh, when it's implemented, it's a data structure called last in, first out. Because that's how it operates. If you think that's a strange name for a data structure, it's even stranger when it's abbreviated LIFO. L-I-F-O. <clears throat> so when you're conversing with some hotshot computer scientist out there in the real world and they say, well, we use the LIFO for that. That's what they're talking about. It's an implementation of a stack, last in, first out. Here are the all-important operations, abbreviated. And there are only two. Push. P-U-S-H. And all push does is put something in the stack object. Put something. I'll even abbreviate something. S-T-H-G. Put something in the stack. There. That's all there is to it. you got to do that. you also got to be able to pop. And wouldn't it be nice if it was just take something out of the stack? Well, it kind of is, but we're pickier about what we take out of the stack than when we put something in. Remove and return. It's a combined operation. Remove and return the newest or you could call it most recent, the thing that we pushed into the stack most recently. I'm just calling it the newest thing. Uh, remove and return the newest thing from the stack. And that's it. That's almost all there is to it. Um, I like to work with pictures. Of course I do. So let's look at an example of which I shall draw a picture. Example, X with fig. There's the example, here's the fig. <clears throat> In my metaphorical view of the universe, a stack looks like a well, but it's not a bottomless well. Oh no, it is a well with a bottom. The bottom of the stack. This is my stack object, pictorially rendered. Uh, how do we illustrate what it does? Well, we just do a bunch of pushes and pops. And here I go. Push. I'm going to list a bunch of stuff, and then we'll just see what it does. Push red. Push. You know what? I bet that's not dark enough for you to read. I have one and only one dark green marker. I don't know what I'm going to do when this dries out. This says push red. You can hardly tell that's green anymore, huh? Push Orange. Another push? Yeah. Push yellow. And I'm going to do a pop after that. 
Why don't I specify a color? Well, when I pop, I'm taking something out of the stack. Push is putting something in. It's like an insert operation. Pop is a remove. Take it out. And I've got to make these consistent. One moment, please. There. Now they're all dark green. After I do a pop, I'm going to turn around and do some more pushes. I can mix these operations up any way I want. That's uh, one of the characteristics, by the way, of our TV class and all the other classes that we do. Do not write member functions assuming that your user is going to call them in any particular order. For example, we, it is not safe for us to assume that the logical, intelligent user is necessarily going to do some pushes before they do any pops. Don't write your code assuming that much intelligence on the part of the user. Users are idiots. They're going to do anything wrong they can trying to break your object. But you want to make yourself robust and bulletproof and all those good things so that they can't. You can, you can just send back false or send back some sort of error code or something. Even with the TV class, we're not going to assume that TV class that you're working on already. Uh, don't assume those operations are called in any particular order. Got off track. What am I going to do after I push yellow and then pop? I'm going to do some more pushes. Push green. Push blue. Pop, pop. Pop, pop, pop. Three pops. Pops in a row. Whoops. Pop, pop, pop. And then push violet. Is that right? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Oops, I forgot indigo. I'll get that next time around. Uh, push violet. What does that do? Well, let's find out. Push red. Push. Put something in the stack. Put red in the stack. Since it's the first thing there, it falls all the way down to the bottom. Settles all the way down to the bottom of our stack. It's not a bottomless well. It is a bottomed well. That's done. Push orange, okay? That goes on top of red. In my metaphorical well view of a stack. Hmm, maybe that's where it's got its name. Things are getting stacked up. Like a stack of dishes. Do you have any dishes? That's done. Push yellow. There it is. Done. Now we pop. This is the first time we do the pop operation. Remove and return the newest thing, the most recently pushed thing. The most recently pushed thing in that stack is yellow. So I remove it from the stack. You're out of here, yellow. And return it back to whoever called the pop operation. So pop actually gets something sent back to it. It gets back the yellow. Now underline that. We got a result from the pop operation. Now we turn around and push again. Push green. Now I'm not going to erase things. I'm actually... Uh, it's smarter than the computer this way. I can see a sort of a historical record of the stack contents if I just leave yellow and cross it out, sort of like the old values of variables. But from the computer's perspective, that's long gone. There's nothing in there but orange and red. So when I push green in here, it looks like it's going on top of yellow. But it's not. There ain't no yellow no more. The green went on top of orange. See how that works? So I pushed green. Let's push blue. So much fun. Okay, now pop. Now it turns around and takes out the most recently pushed thing. In this case, tis blue. Two pieces. Pop it, takes it out of the stack, and sends it back to whoever called the pop operation. So pop got back blue. Here's another pop. That, now just, we're only paying attention. The only things that are actually in the stack are the ones that are not crossed out. So when I do pop here, it's going to get green and send that back to me. So green is now out of the stack. They're coming in out in reverse order from when they were pushed in. Pop, that gets orange. Now these can be done in any order. I could have kept popping if I wanted to, but I'm going to push violet which actually, violet goes on top of red. All those other things have already been popped and removed from the stack. Violet. And with those set of operations, I haven't been keeping up with my check part, 
check marks. Done, 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 done. All done. Now, there is uh, not an awful lot here, but there is a boundary condition. In other words, a special case. What happens? Uh, boundary cases tend to show up what happens when this thing is completely full. Well, even though I didn't look like I have infinite space here, we're assuming just with a general stack, I can put as many things on the stack as I want. There is a boundary condition on the other end, though. What if I pop everything out? What happens? So if I had, you know what? I'm going to start another column here and do pop, pop, pop. This is picking up where I left off down here, by the way. This pop gets something that gets violet. That's the most recent thing. This pop gets red. Red's been waiting the longest down there at the bottom. This pop doesn't get anything. No check mark for you. That's where, that's where pushing forward and thinking just a little bit about implementation. I said I wasn't going to, and then I lied. I'm sorry. I am going to talk about it just a little bit. That's why we probably want to have this be a Boolean function, because it's possible that pop can fail. If it does get me a color, or whatever it is I'm pushing in the stack and send it back, then it will return true. You asked me to do a job, and I was able to do it, and I'm successful, and everybody's happy. If I ask pop to do a job, and it can't do it, then it will return false, because there's nothing to return. And any additional pops beyond this point right here will also, they're not going to crash the program. They better not. If they do, it's your fault in your implementation of the stack. But any additional pops will get a return value, a Boolean return value that indicates fail, failure. I wasn't able to do that. Now, I said any additional ones. Again, man, I can't stop lying today. I don't know what's in the air. But not every pop is necessarily going to return false because remember these operations can be done in any order. If I push pink right after this pop right here, then there will be something in the stack. Pink will be in here all by itself. So there will be at least one additional pop operation that will be successful. Looking at the screen, it looks like that is ridiculously crooked. Is it? If it is, I'm sorry. Well, that is a whole board full of stack and I have not made a case for it being outrageously important. Actually, you might think this is just so simple, falling off a log simple, that how could this possibly be important? You know, it's ironic, isn't it? There, I guess uh, importance is directly proportional to simplicity. It's because this is so simple that there are just a wide variety of applications out there. Uh, one of them, um, if you've been surfing the web today before you've gotten around to watch your YouTube videos, when you go through page after page after page, clicking on links, and you realize, you know, I need to get back where I was. Back, 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 back. You are popping the websites. There's a stack of websites in your browser application. And every time you go further in a hyperlink or an arrow or whatever, then it's pushing the previous one on the stack. Actually, every one that you move to gets pushed on the stack. So when you're clicking your back button on your browser, it's just popping off the URLs of the places that you've been today. You can turn around and push new stuff on, surf in another direction. That is one of seemingly an infinite number of applications of stacks. It does things like solve puzzles and solve mazes and get you out of video games and so forth. But that's beyond the scope of this discussion. This is all just what a stack is. And here's an example. That was Roman numeral one. My precious dark green doesn't like to erase it, be erased. But I can live with that. Moving on. Roman numeral two. Companion. Uh, they're almost like cousins or something. The other outrageously important data type is called a queue. A queue is first in, first out. And it's also got its acronym that people sling around in the computing industry. This is a FIFO, F-I-F-O. You might have even seen that before. First in, first out. 
This one probably feels a little more natural, a little more normal than a stack, but I don't know that it's any more applicable. I don't know that there are more applications for queues than there are for stacks. The word queue, I mean, that's, that's what British people say instead of line. When, when they're waiting for the bus, they don't stand in line, they stand in a queue. So it's, it's kind of a fancy word. And where we can in computer science, we like to use fancy words, or couldn't you tell? Uh, Q, operations. Any self-respecting object that wants to call itself a Q better be able to do these things. They better be able to handle an insert. That's even a bore, more boring name than push, isn't it? Push is a little more exciting, a little more exotic. Insert has even got a boring description. Put something in the queue. Oops. Spell put. Put S T H G something in the queue. Remove. Boring, boring, boring. Remove. Take something out of the queue. Yeah, definitely. Um, how did I describe it for a stack? Uh, remove and return. Remove and return. The oldest. The one that's been waiting the longest. That's only fair, isn't it? Return and remove the oldest thing in the queue. Seems more fair than a stack, doesn't it? Uh, for example, did I draw a line before? I don't remember. Example, with a fig. Now, this is not, doesn't look like a well. This looks like the cardboard tube that's left when you empty a roll of paper towels. Or, among my siblings when we were kids, those were called all odds. Because we would fight over who got it, and then you could put it to your mouth and really rub it in with your brothers and sisters. Oh, 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 oh. That, that's not something you need to know for the test, by the way. Let's uh, try out these operations and see what happens. And I forgot to change colors. Sorry about that. I am going to insert. Actually, I'm going to insert several things. So rather than writing that over and over again in the interest of time, I'm just going to put the things I'm going to insert. I'm going to insert red and orange and yellow. Yeah, you're experiencing deja vu because this way it'll be easier to contrast and compare. If I do more or less the equivalent operations on a queue that I did on a stack, we'll be able to see how this behaves differently, won't we? Uh, red, orange, yellow, and then not a pop operation. I'm going to do a remove, see if I get anything. Then what do I do? I do some more insert operations. And if I copy this down right, Man, I, I wish I could write more clearly. It'd be so much easier to follow this. I'm going to insert uh, green and blue, I think. And I'm going to take a shot at three remove operations. And then I'm going to, what, insert whoever's next, violet. There. Insert red. Well, things come in the back. You have to get your place in line. And then when it's your turn, you get to come out the front. That's why I think of it as that hollow cardboard tube. So red came in the back, but it's going to be front of the line. So I'm going to go ahead and write that way over here at the front. Oh. Silly me. Done. Orange. Orange has to get in line behind red because this is a queue. It's a British line. Get behind red. Orange. Done. Then yellow has to get in line. Just seems more like the natural order, doesn't it? Removed. Well, removed gets whoever's been waiting in line the longest. So it removes and returns the oldest thing. Red's been in there the longest. Remove gets red. Insert green. Green has to get behind yellow. Insert blue. Blue has to go behind green. 
Now it looks like they're hanging out the cue back there. I just didn't make it long enough to hold everything that I'm putting in there at one time. It's not drawn to scale. Remove. Remove gets the next thing waiting in the queue. That's orange. Two pieces. Take it out and send it back. Okay, remove. Take out the yellow. Send it back. And remove. Take out the green. Send it back. Insert violet. Violet will go behind blue. And with the list of operations I've got here, then that's going to be the end of it. I've left two things in the queue. There's no rule in my ADT that says I have to start and end with an empty queue. I'm going to start with an empty queue, but I can end anywhere. I mean, just these operations, remember, I just more or less invoke these operations in random order on my queue object, and sometimes there'll be stuff left in there, sometimes they won't. If I did my little sequence over here, let's just uh, look at this hypothetical. If I call remove three more times in a row, then you know what's going to happen. The next remove will get blue, and it's gone. The next remove will get violet, and it's gone. The queue will then be empty. So when I call remove a third time over here, hypothetically, it better get a false return value. It better have some way to indicate, I can't do what you asked me to do. You asked me to remove from the queue, and there's nothing in there. That's why Boolean, in spite of its extreme limitation of only having two possible values, true and false, that shows up a lot. Boolean functions typically are returning whether or not they are able to do what you ask them to do. So if you ask remove, take something out of the queue, and there's nothing there, then it's going to return false. All these other times with remove, when it got a color, it returned true. Uh, let's see, an application in the computing world. The uh, printer queue is called a queue. A lot, of, a lot of queues are called queues, by the way. Printer queue on the network at Transylvania. If you send your print job and somebody else sent theirs before you, then they got in line. They got in the queue before you did. And if they're printing out uh, the text of all of Shakespeare's plays, then you're not going to get that history paper that's due in five minutes for quite a while because you got behind them in the queue and you don't get their turn, your turn until their turn is up. There's an application. Now, I filled up the board twice. I've talked about two outrageously important ADTs. And I don't have any place to go with those right now. I think that's a good place to end the discussion. And it's about time for a shorter video, isn't it? I'll see you online.